You are watching the Doc Talk Show. Welcome back. The topic of discussion today is diseases of the blood vessels. That's that special network of pipes and tubes which help supply blood from the heart, which is the pump, basically the engine of the body. It supplies blood which is rich in oxygen and nutrients to the rest of the body. That system is called the arterial blood vessels. And uh, just before and for the break, we found that if a problem occurs in those blood vessels and they become blocked or they start to narrow, the areas which are receiving that blood slowly begin to die. So I want to know, are there things that can cause diseases of blood vessels? What are the risk factors and what are the causes? So Dr. Mom, could you yeah. take us through that? So that is like we said earlier, the heart and the blood vessels are related. And so the risk factors for the heart are similar to those of the blood vessels. Okay. And again, like we do for the heart, we, we, the blood vessels have risk factors that are modifiable and those that are non-modifiable. I'll start with the so non-modifiable. Non-modifiable means they can't be changed. Yeah, we, you, you can't change them. Mm. Things which you can't change but can put you at risk mm. of, of, of developing you know, the diseases of the blood vessels. Okay. And then there are those things we can change, can change. and those ones help us, you know, to prevent, uh, to protect us, so to prevent us uh, acquiring these uh, blood vessel diseases. Mm -hmm. Now, things we can't change include our own genetic makeup. So if you have a genetic makeup, say in the family you have people who have blood vessel disease, people who have had a history of, say, stroke, or have got some of these diseases like Raynaud's disease, where the moment you go in the cold, you just start getting pain in your hands because the, the body re reacts. Reacting to the cold. To the to cold. The temperature. Eh? Okay. Yeah, some people have that predisposition. Mm -hmm. So if you have family members who have that, that means your genetic composition mm -hmm. is predisposed. And you can't change that. You can't change That's that. That's just who you are. You just have to change the way you live. Okay. Avoid cold environments, be in warm places whenever you have that pain. So we can't change that. Okay. Secondly, is your age. We can't change your age. We usually see these diseases of the arteries coming up in people who are above 50 years old. Okay? Okay. So that again, we cannot change. Can't change. As you grow old, the things are becoming tired. Oh, they're becoming yes. stiff. Exactly. And they can't, you know, they stop being able to expand yes. and slowly they begin to narrow. Exactly. Okay. There are some things... Diabetes. Some, if you were born with diabetes, again, you can say you can't change it. But today we are seeing many people developing diabetes in older age. Okay, we have to call type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And this diabetes is coming on especially because of our lifestyles. Lifestyle. Okay, yes, some of it is with lifestyle. Sometimes we grow so fat, so obesity also in itself, mm -hmm. so fat that the pancreas cannot generate adequate insulin. For our body mm. and we end up developing diabetes mm. and so, i think even that excess fat i think that's one which is even blocking so the blood vessels our diet when you are very fat there's also a higher risk that you have more fat uh, uh, which is not being broken down adequately and flowing in your blood but also the diets we eat which have a lot of fat also predisposed to high fat levels in our blood so this may end up getting deposited within the blood vessels. Smoking, people who smoke, the nicotine within our cigarette smoke increases the release of what we call catecholamines. Catecholamines are chemicals in the body which help you to you know, generate energy you know, for flight or fight. Mm -hmm. you, like when the you heart, get scared and that's certain that's that, thing, that, that chemical which does that, eh, they are mm -hmm. catecholamines, mm -hmm. for example, adrenaline. So, the nicotine induces release of catecholamines. These catecholamines also make the blood vessels narrow down. So when you smoke, you also tend to cause it's narrowing down. narrow in your things, exactly. your blood vessels. But at the same time, this, the, the, the nicotine, it, it disorganizes the breakdown of fat, the metabolism of fat. And so you have a lot of abnormal fat flowing in you. And so you find that many of these patients who smoke, tend to have what we call atherosclerosis. They have abnormal fat deposition within their blood vessels. 
And, and so smoking, we always have said, is very bad. But smoking per se also the nicotine also disorganizes the metabolism of the cells in the blood vessel wall. It may cause them to lay down even more muscle and in the process the vessels become narrowed, what we call Burgers disease. So you have narrowing of the small and, and, and medium sized vessels and then they eventually get blocked. Yes. So all these are effects of smoking. These are smoking. Is it the same why... thing with shisha? You know, in these days yes. people smoke shisha, shisha, electronic cigarettes. Is it the same effect? Shisha is even worse. It's worse. Because shisha, when you do a puff of shisha, you are like smoking 20 cigarettes at the same time. The same 20 time. sticks. So You're taking 20 increases. sticks at the same time. So the risks are even higher with, with shisha. Electronic cigarettes... All they have done is try to, to limit, the, to, to, to remove the issue of smoke. But you still have the, all those toxins the into, and the nicotine are all still in that electronic cigarette. Okay. But it is now burnt within a chamber, which is like a small pen, and immediately inhaled. So you, you may not feel the smoke around you may not but still the toxins enter in the body and going to cause the narrowing of the blood vessels we have other factors like emotional stress emotional stress itself people who are very every time emotionally stressed tend to release a lot of catecholamines and again they are going to cause narrowing of of their of their blood vessels our environment cold temperatures for those people especially who may be predisposed, cold temperatures will induce narrowing of these vessels. In fact, if a patient has already peripheral artery disease with little blood flow in, in the arteries, we usually advise them, for example, if you have a tiled house, to avoid walking direct on your tiles because these tiles tend to be cold. Mm -hmm. And so the vessels in the legs will even constrict, will, 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 will narrow down even more because of the reaction to the, the reaction cold. To that and cold. the pain may be mm. even worse. Okay. Then the other thing again is the drugs we take. Some of the drugs we take, like people who have migraine headache, they take some of these drugs which narrow down the blood vessels because we target the blood vessels in the brain to narrow down so that we reduce the blood flow into the brain to reduce that headache. So some like, of these, is it like the NSAIDs, like the, the these are like sumatriptan, mm, you no know, agotamine. The, the, these are the types of agotam, migraine. Not yes, the, migraine. Not the painkillers. Not the ordinary painkillers, but okay. the, these ones which treat migraine. Mm. Some of those. Then even these beta blockers for the heart, which we use for blood pressure. Some of them, they will cause the vessels to narrow down, and they may induce or worsen, yeah, worsen this condition, and, and or, or or worsen the pain. We've also noticed people who work a lot or with repetitive actions, especially with the hands, like on the old typewriters, even the people who play piano organs, if you play for very long, some of these actions may induce spasm within the vessels. And may, because of the repeated movements, the blood flow may not be sufficient and you end up getting pain within your hands. So, so the, the, the vessels start narrowing down. So, it is advised that uh, when you have these vibrating machines, you need to, to have a, a pause between your work so that you have adequate flow into your hands. Mm -hmm. So th these are some of the common mm -hmm. causes, causes of that, blood that, vessel that, diseases. Yes, I think see. another one which we, I think we have forgotten to mention, diabetes. Yes. High sugars can also spoil the blood vessels in ways which you cannot imagine, uh, can directly contribute to get in the problems you have described, those arterial diseases, they become spoiled. You know, very high sugars tends to spoil the inside of the blood vessels. So it becomes rough and you start getting uh, <clears throat> blood clots forming or they become, I don't know, spoiled in some way. And they you may also get narrow. fat because the sugars at mm. times they metabolize, mm. uh, metabolism is deranged, converted mm. into fat, into you get fats, higher then fat they start deposits. In there. Yes, okay. and then of course even the the cells themselves, the metabolism of the cells within the blood vessels in diabetics is, is affected by various chemicals that tend to be released when high sugars are, in, are present. So diabetes actually is one of the very top 
or leading causes of, 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 of peripheral artery diseases. And, and we see it a lot in, in patients who come with gangrene. We see it a lot in patients who have kidney disease because they, they, they really affect the, the blood flow to the kidneys. And so diabetes is one area that must be very well controlled to avoid uh, such complications. So you can see there is a vast um, network of things that can cause, some are preventable or modifiable, things like uh, controlling your diet, watch your weight, avoiding smoking, all these are things that can be avoided and can reduce your risk of getting or killing your body. Mm -hmm. Things, some things cannot be avoided. For example, as you grow old, natural blood vessels begin to thicken, they become, become very stiff and uh, you start getting those pains. That's why the old people sometimes feel pain, I think, when they're walking. It's a process of age, advanced age, and the blood vessels are a bit thick. So, um, so blood vessels are quite an interesting, um, can we say they're an organ of the body? They're a network system network, within the yes. body, and they, can, they themselves can become diseased. How to correctly diagnose artery disease and how to treat it. So I'm going to talk about this right after the break. Don't go away, we'll be right back. You are watching The Dog Talk Show.